Welcome to a new episode of the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show. My name is Julio Panicello. I am the dream alchemist at Ruthless Painters, a free range art school and gallery for creative nomads. In each episode, we feature the theme of our next painting collection so you can learn what we will be painting and also find out the reason why. We discuss the origin of the painting theme and its contemporary context, and we explore different possibilities for visual representation on our work, using images of paintings throughout art history as inspiration. Citing stylistic and historical references, so they help us with the, um, with the selection of the theme and also uh, giving us ideas. Uh, in many ways, especially today, our episodes are like our paintings, completely messy and predictable and unvarnished. We just uh, have um, a few images, but uh, yeah, sometimes you just never know uh, what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, anyhow, you can find all the episodes on video format here on Instagram and also on our YouTube channel which um, it's filled with uh, wonderful uh, videos, we think. And also, you can find the episodes as podcasts on any uh, podcast platform. You just have to type The Roofless Dog and Pony Show and you'll find a bunch. And um, yeah, we highly encourage you to listen to them when you drive or if you, find out, if you want to fall asleep because... Um, that's what we do with any podcast uh, episode. Um, anyhow, so this week um, we are going to paint a subject that we have encountered uh, encountered um, in a gallery, actually. Well, it was, yeah, it was a gallery. I think it was a gallery. Anyhow, so uh, the accidental Renaissance paintings... Um, uh, or collection of paintings was such an incredible opportunity to talk about uh, stylistic uh, elements on paintings that create drama, that create this operatic uh, context uh, that feels very timely, um, I should say. So we were uh, walking on um, we walked in a store, uh, essentially, a vintage uh, store, a thrift store, um, and we saw a serigraphed, a signed serigraph um, of an original painting by an, Amer an American artist. Let me see if I can bring uh, the painting. Oh, it's not going to be fully visible, maybe. Oh, yes. So we saw this. Um, it's a serigraph. Uh, which means a form of reproduction, uh, reprodu uh, reproducing uh, an original. Um, and it's by American artist Leroy Neyman, 1921-2012. Uh, and we stopped because uh, it's a gorgeous monochromatic uh, painting of an uh, Afghan hound. Um, so... Yeah, uh, we thought this painting was incredible and uh, we love the uh, tonalism of the, f the fur, the high contrast against the background, the fact that there's no spatial context. Um, this uh, I, uh, scale of the head versus the legs, uh, the freedom and spontaneity, uh, I never know how to pronounce this word, um, uh, in which the artist uh, recreated uh, the texture of the fur, you know, the looseness of the, br the brush stroke, the fact that um, the legs have um, uh, uh, movement in the sense that they're not uh, parallel. We always talk about uh, painting legs or limbs of any kind or even branches on trees not to conform um, to any parallel containment. So everything here uh, feels very loose and with uh, uh, a lot of um, dynamic energy. And we thought uh, we haven't painted dogs in a while. And we thought uh, there's nothing uh, politically or socially 
that would connect with this, but uh, we just wanted to paint um, or use Afghan hounds as subjects of our paintings for the next painting collection because coming out of the accidental renaissance and having been enjoying uh, uh, the drama uh, uh, that we tried to achieve, we thought it would be a good subject to do almost like a take two of that um, uh, vibe. So we brought some images. We didn't have time to actually put together the titles with the images, but we're going to show you some images, uh, some photographs, by the way, uh, but also some paintings. And some of them are highly realistic, but uh, some of them are not. Um, so let's uh, let's do this. Um, first of all, uh, Life magazine had an Af Afghan hound uh, on the cover of the issue in uh, one issue in 1945. And it's not a photograph, it's an actual sketch. It is, right? I think it is. Uh, there was an article explaining or talking about uh, this breed. And we... Um, read a couple of things about the breed um, and how it's uh, not the most obedient breed. Apparently they're very independent and they, they're at the bottom of the list in regards to responding uh, to commands. So we love the fact that they're um, uh, very independent in that, independent in that sense. Uh, and speaking of sense, they have uh, one of the most acute um, uh, sense of smell uh, so uh, we also found um, anonymous painting of an Afghan hound this feels extremely uh, renaissance like so we brought it not because that's going to be a goal to achieve but be we brought it because the image uh, sort of like combines everything we talked about during the accidental renaissance um, uh, the drama of the light, uh, the softness of the edges. Um, uh, yeah, just this feels like a very classic portrait. There is something obviously very uh, attractive about the fur of uh, this particular breed. The long hair with the different uh, shades and how it changes uh, color. And um, so... I think uh, for the purposes of uh, using this as a subject of a painting, this could be really interesting. Uh, a different way of approaching uh, hair texture on a painting, but instead of using a um, uh, human being, we're going to use an Afghan hound. Um, so I'm going to show you also a collection of paintings <clears throat> by uh, Pablo Picasso. So we learned that Pablo Picasso um, had many dogs and uh, one of his favorite breeds was the Afghan Hound. So there are a couple of photographs. We found uh, a couple of photographs of Picasso with his Afghan Hounds at the beach. Uh, this one is at the beach. Uh, we don't have the date, but... Um, and then also uh, there's another photograph of Picasso with one of his Afghan hounds um, in his studio. Yes. So uh, the thing about his love for Afghan hounds is not only that uh, he loved to hang out with them, uh, but he also uh, featured the dogs in many of his paintings. So we're going to show you now examples of representation of Afghan hounds with a completely different style compared to what uh, we showed before. Um, this is, uh, it's not uh, very well cropped, but you can see the Afghan dog at the bottom. So this is a painting by Picasso of um, a figure and then there's an Afghan, Afghan dog inside and then uh, a figure and uh, the Afghan the Afghan dog is in the uh, in the painting so it's part of the uh, composition uh, this is another Picasso painting featuring a female figure with an Afghan hound 
And finally, we have, we're going to have, we promise we're going to have all the dates on this uh, paintings uh, tomorrow when we start the, oh, this is possibly uh, one of our, our favorites because of the simplicity. Um, it just shows a cropping, um, a cropped view of the painting, but there is um, a combination again of a sitting figure, something to be said about this uh, pairing that he used repeatedly of a sitting uh, female figure, uh, three-quarter perspective, and then uh, the silhouette and the figure and the representation of an Afghan hound. Um, we're not going to try to psychoanalyze, uh, psychoanalyze these images because uh, w when we show images of <clears throat> Pablo Picasso, we always say that he was a monster um, uh, with other human beings. So we don't have a kind um, opinion of his uh, personality. Um, and we're not going to talk or we can, we're not going to deep go deep trying to find out the reason why uh, he used this combination in this particular position. Uh, but uh, maybe we'll just find some uh, bits uh, or juicy uh, bits of information that we can provide um, about this pairing. Um, uh, a couple... Uh, I'm just going to show you maybe just one more painting and then I'll show you... Um, also, this is a painting uh, also featuring an Afghan hound. And let me see if I can find uh, the actual title. I don't think so. So, um, anyhow, I'm not going to spend uh, time. But, um, yeah, uh, let's, I'm just going to continue uh, the presentation because I almost, uh, I'm almost done with it. <laughs> oh my gosh, talk about unvarnished. <laughs> um, but yeah, the idea for this new painting collection is um, choosing an Afghan hound as a subject. And the reason is because um, some of the images that we've seen, uh, some of the photographs, they uh, feature this beautiful animal uh, with this long fur uh, um, and we feel like it can provide the opportunity to practice texture uh, and brushstroke style. So this could be, uh, and, and not focus so much with a, a, a huge color range, but um, uh, being a very, um, or having a very restricted color palette. So I'll show you also images of celebrities, uh, other celebrities. Um, Marlene Dietrich uh, with her Afghan hounds in her home. Uh, that's uh, one of the photographs. I think um, a lot of celebrities or perhaps there was an, a, a time uh, when Afghan hounds were considered um, uh, a symbol of status. Um, I don't think we see as many Afghan hounds today because uh, the, the most challenging thing about taking care of them is making sure that their fur is properly, properly taken care of. Um, and if you notice, um, a lot of dog owners that don't have Af Afghan hounds, but they have other breeds, they rather shave uh, the dog's fur, not because it's great for the dog, because, but because they don't want to take care of the fur. So maybe it, this was uh, a symbol of a higher status because it's a breed that uh, needs a lot of care, a lot of exercise. These are hunting dogs um, and uh, it requires a lot of uh, financial resources to to provide that. So perhaps a combination of uh, their very um, sculptor-like um, or statuesque uh, features and then the fact that um, they need a lot of care. This is my West um, just holding or having two, her two Afghan hounds. Um, yeah, um, I think also um, maybe a symbol of power uh, perhaps. Um, and then finally, I'll just show you some of the images that we're going to bring as reference. So 
there are a lot of uh, fashion editorials uh, that feature Afghan dogs next to um, top models or fashion models. So um, it's interesting because this breed has, all, has also been used in the past uh, as, a, as a highly stylized uh, accessory to drama and um, fashion and costumes and grand uh, stuff. But anyhow, some of the images, some of the images that we're going to use feature the Afghan hounds uh, uh, in full glory. So um, let me just kind of like say again that the reason why we're going to choose this subject, uh, it's not because of the symbolism uh, or the status that they had uh, uh, or the, that celebrities used. But we feel like it's a, a great opportunity to practice brushstroke style, hair texture, and stay with a very narrow color palette. So this would be one of the images. And then uh, I think I have a couple uh, more I do. Uh, 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 oh, yes. So this is another image uh, talking about accidental renaissance from last week. And then uh, seeing um, images from that uh, point forward um, from the perspective or the prism of seeing if they are accidental renaissance or not. So this is also a great image that contains a dramatic light direction, a very stylized uh, posture, uh, and then the combination or the opportunity to practice uh, uh, texture, hair texture, and brushstroke style. So we hope you uh, join us tomorrow. Uh, we hope you find this theme um, uh, interesting. Uh, we can wait to uh, tackle this and create a collection of paintings uh, inspired by photographs of Afghan hounds. Um, session is tomorrow. It's three hours two hours painting, one hour exchanging, critiquing, and uh, sharing um, our work, and all that just for 20 bucks. So the link is already on our calendar. Please uh, join us. This would be a really fun assignment. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed the uh, presentation. All right, bye.